You may be asking yourself, why do we have these white flowers in front of the amble? And the reason why is because yesterday we had a wedding here between Kyle and Shelby. It was a beautiful wedding. It actually went down in history because it will be the last wedding that we have in this church before uh, the renovation uh, begins, hopefully soon. And so the next time we have a wedding, I think it's scheduled January 18th between Dylan and Jordan. Of course, the church will be facing a different way. And of course, we know we're in the midst of wedding season. Obviously, here at St. John's, it's postponed a little bit. But other places, wedding season, it's also graduation season, ordination season, championship season. It seems like a lot of things are coming to, to a head here. And one of the great things I like to see during this time is the reactions of people. You know, one of my favorite things to watch is sometimes is kindergarten graduation. And the extreme joy and feel of accomplishment that these kindergartners have from graduating. And I think, boy... They have a lot in front of them, right? It only goes down from a kindergarten graduation, in my opinion, uh, sometimes. But even more, more importantly, I think, and even special sometimes are those college graduations where there's someone in the family that graduated from the first time from college. The emotion that that family will have and that excitement and that sense of accomplishment is a great reaction uh, to, to see. I mentioned it's championship season as well. We know that high school championships are, are coming to an end here with, with the different sports. It's also, we know these past, this past week we've had two uh, championships in the major sports, in, in basketball and in hockey. Now, full disclosure, by the way, I'm trying to withdraw myself from sports, but every time that championship season comes around, I kind of get sucked in. So uh, this past week I said, you know, I'm going I'm to read a book and watch sports at the same time. It doesn't work that way. Anyways, what happens is you put the book down and you start watching, right? And so sure enough, the two champions that happened were, first off, you know, we could talk about the basketball champions, the Golden State Warriors, who out of the last four years have won it three times out of the last four years. And they were excited when they won, but it wasn't like over jubilation. It was like, yeah, we did it again. No big deal. Ho-hum, ho-hum. We're going to win it for four more years in a row as well because we have the super team. Da, 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 da. Minnesota will never win. That's what I felt, at least, in their championship celebration. Now, there's a complete difference between that one and what happened in the NHL with the Washington Capitals. The Capitals have not won the championship in, in 40 years, and they were going against the Las Vegas uh, Golden Knights. And for the, for the Knights, you know, I think most people were probably cheering for the Capitals. And why were most people cheering for the Capitals? Because of the whole experience that this franchise, you could say, has gone through. All of the heartbreak, all of the disappointment, all the Game 7s they, they lost to Pittsburgh along the ways. Whereas the Golden Knights have had a whole whopping, you know, 200 days in existence of playing, not much to go back in history. And so sure enough, as the games happened, I always, you know, the, the cameras would focus on one player, pretty much Alex Ovechkin, because he himself has gone through so much disappointment, you could say. He's been known as one of the greatest players to play the game, and yet has never won the Stanley Cup. It's almost looked at as a failure, which is ridiculous. That's not the case. But anyways, as the series went on, you could see the excitement that he'd have, and also the disappointment that he'd have if they lost the game. Sure enough, in game five, when you could tell that they were going to win, the, the cameras definitely focused on, on him. And as the clock ticked down, he was jumping up and down with joy. As the clock came to zero, he hopped off the bench with huge excitement. And of course, probably the best tradition in hockey is that they hand the Stanley Cup to the captain of the team. And that's what I wanted to watch. And that's what I was able to see. And that's where I actually turned the volume up and really put the book down. And sure enough, they said, and now, you know, Alex, come on up and, uh, and claim the Stanley Cup, which goes to the captain. And as he went and skated towards the cup, you could see a great smile come across his face. And as he grabbed the cup and lifted it up, a huge scream came out. I could feel this great pressure coming out and this joy overwhelming him. And that was his pure emotion. He finally got what he was longing for professionally. And I think we know he hasn't put the cup down yet. So maybe we should pray for him because I think he's celebrating a little bit too much right now, by the way, anyways, right? But anyways, that huge emotion goes off and he's, he's so excited because professionally he has what he longs for. But you and I know nothing earthly will ever truly bring us fulfillment. It won't. It's a passing thing. It's transitory. 
be it a championship, be it a job, be it wealth, whatever that earthly goal is, is never truly going to bring us fulfillment. We saw that this past week in the news as well. People who seem to have everything are still in the midst of darkness. And why? Well, that's, that's a big subject. But I think one of the reasons, one of many, by the way, is because we can't make our fulfillment earthly things. It will never fulfill us. And that goes the same if we make someone else our fulfillment. If I only have this person, as long as I have them, then I'm fulfilled. The only person we can have that's going to bring us fulfillment is God. And why? Because in God, we have life. In God, we have eternal treasure. And earthly things, they pass away. We hear about this today in our second reading from St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4, and beginning of chapter 5. He states, For we know that if our earthly dwelling a tent should be destroyed, which it will be, by the way, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. And when we come to know Christ, when we come to have this relationship with him, what we're going to realize, as St. Paul says as well, is that he will give us all that we need, even in the midst of affliction. Once again, one of the reasons that I think people are cheering for the Capitals is because it wasn't all easy for them. And we can relate to that in our own life as well. Life is not always easy, nor should we expect it to be. This isn't heaven. It's not all going to be easy. It's not all going to be perfect. But St. Paul states in this same letter, he says, Therefore we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. St. Paul, of course, experiences the many hardships that he had, the shipwrecks, being imprisoned, being persecuted, eventually being martyred. And then he's saying, although my outer self is wasting away, my inner self is being renewed day by day. And he goes on to say, for this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Do we catch that? This momentary light affliction. And that's what it is. Even these greatest hardships are nothing compared to the glory awaiting for us with God. And we know as well that this life is nothing but a blinking of, of the eye for God compared to what awaits for us. He goes on to say, as we look not to what is seen, but what to is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. And so as we deal with these afflictions, as we deal with this heartbreak and this sorrow, let's not get discouraged. Let's not turn away from God, but rather abandon ourselves to God even more, knowing that eternal glory waits for us. And then that celebration, when God calls us home to him in heaven, is greater than any earthly celebration can be. It's a celebration with God, not just for a day, not just for a week or a year, but a celebration with God eternally.